Hello, everyone. My name is Dee Dee Butler, and I'd like to welcome you to today's webinar, 30-Minute Training Vulcan Block Model Viewing Tools. Your host today is Michaela Crum. Michaela is a geological engineer and Vulcan Technical Services Manager in the MapTech Denver office. Her areas of expertise include MapTech's coal modeling tools, as well as block and resource modeling. A few things before we get started. First, today's webinar will conclude with a question and answer session, so please feel free to write questions in the panel on the right-hand side of your screen. Also, you will receive a link to a recording of this webinar by email in case you'd like to see it again. It will also be available on the MapTech website at a later date. I'll now hand it over to Michaela. Thank you, Didi, and welcome, everyone. Today's webinar will cover some block model viewing tools in Vulkan. This topic will be most beneficial to those of you who receive block models and need to quickly look at them in Vulkan and get some basic information on your screen. If you frequently create, manipulate, and estimate block models in your role, then you are probably already familiar with most of these tools that I'm going to demonstrate. But if you want to learn how to view block models in Vulkan and display some helpful information, then keep on watching. Let's talk about today's webinar outline. So first we're going to discuss three different methods to view a Vulcan block model. We'll view blocks, block model slices, and then load the dynamic model. Next we'll view grade values estimated in a specific block on your screen using the inquire tool, loading up block texts, and also using data tips. Finally, we'll view the block search ellipse and the samples used to populate the grade for each separate block. All right, let's jump into the live demo. So today we're going to be working in Vulkan 10.0.3, and on the right hand, or the left hand side of your screen, you've got your Vulkan Explorer. The top option is called Block Models, and if you expand that folder you can see the different block models that are located in your project directory. We've got one block model called Block 1, and if we expand that option, you can see all the different variables that are tied to the Block 1 block model. If you drag and drop the block onto your screen, you can see the block model extends. Let's load up some drill holes so we have some reference for where the block model is in space. Today we'll use the geology color legend. I'm also going to make the drill hole traces a little bit thicker and change the collar color of those drill holes just to make it easier to see. So now that the drill holes are displayed, you can rotate around to see the block model extents and make sure that the block model extents encompasses all of the drill hole information that we're going to be using to populate the grades. Okay, so the first thing that we need before we can load up a block model is a block legend. To check that, Let's go into Analyze, Legend Edit, Legend Editor. This will open up the Legend Editor in Vulkan, and you can see the different types of legends that are available. We've got some drill legends, a samples legend, and under the block option, we've got two different block legends. The first one's Geo, and that will describe all of the geologic domains available. Today, one of the main focuses that we're going to have is on the ore body called TQ1. And then we also have a gold grade legend, and that's a numeric legend, and you can see that we've got gold grades from 0 to 1.7 and the different colors associated with those separate grades. So we should be good for our block model legends. So the first option to view block models in Vulkan is Block Viewing Blocks. The Load Blocks panel will be displayed, 
and we can load individual blocks up. We're going to select the variable name geo since we're going to focus on geologic domains today. And we'll just load these blocks up as an underlay. But keep in mind that you can save them to a layer if you want to have them available later on. Since we're using the geologic domains, we'll select the geo legend. And here we'll want to be sure to select specific blocks by certain criteria. You don't want to load up all the blocks by selecting the Select All Blocks option because this will load up every single block in your block model and it'll basically just look like a big cube on your screen. So we'll select by separate variables. So we'll say the geo equals TQ1 since that's the ore body that we're going to focus on today. Then click OK. A little window will pop up to let you know how many blocks are being displayed. And on the screen now you can see we've got many blocks available and we can rotate around and see what they look like in 3D. So these pink blocks, uh, they outline our TQ1 domain. The block viewing blocks option is really nice because you can view other entities in Vulcan such as triangulations. So let's load up the TQ1 triangulation at the same time. Now you can see how well Vulcan modeled your TQ1 ore body based on the parameters that you specified when you were creating the block model, such as block size and any sub-blocking that you might have applied. You can view more than one ore body at once through the block viewing box option. So let's load up a separate domain block viewing blocks. We'll keep everything on the first panel the same. Select our geology legend and this time instead of selecting the TQ1 ore body let's pick TQ2. Again you'll see how many blocks got displayed and now you can see that the yellow blocks represent the TQ2 ore body and the pink blocks are still displaying the TQ1 ore body. So the benefit of this viewing method is that you can view the blocks in 3D and rotate around with other data such as triangulations or layers to see how Vulcan modeled the blocks with the block size inputs. However, some of the downfalls are that loading all the blocks at once make it difficult to view specific information because the blocks will overlap each other. All right, let's remove the blocks now and learn a different method of viewing them. To remove these blocks, you will select Block, Viewing, Remove, or you could simply select Block, Remove. It's going to ask you to select each underlay to remove and you can pick one at a time. I'm going to remove this triangulation and we'll learn block viewing slices. That option is under block viewing slice. Here You've got the block model slice panel available. You can select the block model that you want to be displayed and then choose a variable. We'll stick with the geology variable and we're going to display them as an underlay and this time we're going to show block edges but select white instead of green and then click OK. We'll use the geology color legend and this time we're going to pick the slicing section options. We'll pick by two points and a dip of 90 degrees from the two points that we select. This is going to display a plane of your block model. So if I rotate around, you can view all of the blocks in a plane for the geology domain of our area here. 
This is really nice because you don't have to restrict the data. You can view all of the different geologic domains at the same time. You also don't have to make a vertical plane. We can select to create a, uh, an elevation slice. So let's go back into block viewing slice. Leave all of the selections the same. And this time, instead of picking by points, we can pick by a grid coordinate. So we'll select by an elevation of zero. And click OK. So this will display the block model blocks at an elevation of zero. And you can rotate around and have multiple sliced sections viewed at the same time. Another great option is to actually create multiple sections all at once. You can do that through block, viewing, slice, and then select the option multiple slices. We'll select a fixed slice increment and we'll make five slices, 100 meters apart from each other and click OK. We'll go back to creating vertical sections and say OK. And then pick two points to define the plane that you're going to be creating. And now we have five new sections displaying the geology domain for our block model. This is really nice because you can view all the blocks in a plane quickly without restricting the data being displayed. You can also save these slices with a slice name that you can load through the block menu or you can save them as layers. This is the fastest and easiest way to view block models for presentations. To remove the slices, you can select block, viewing, remove, or block, remove just like before, and you have to pick each one at the same time. However, since we have so many slices displayed, I'm going to use this button up here to remove all underlays at once. All right. So the third method for viewing block models is loading the dynamic model. That option is available under block, viewing, load dynamic model. The dynamic block model details panel will be displayed and we'll be coming back to this a couple of times today. So you want to select the block model name and the variable and then you can pick some different parameters. You, you can display it by a, a Vulcan color scheme which is your legend so we're going to use our geo legend but you don't necessarily need to have a legend prepared you can color by spectrum or interpolate between two colors we're going to select all blocks to view all the blocks at once and click OK in order to actually view the block model you need to be in a section view to get in a section, we'll go View, Create Section. We'll just pick by two points and click OK. So now we are in Section View. And this looks very similar to the slice that we just created. The difference is that we are going to be able to dynamically view the slices all at the same time without having to create them individually. Let's load up our overview window, which will help us keep track of where we are in space. So remember, we are in section view and envisage, and the overview window will show us a plan view of what we're actually looking at. The blue line through your screen in the overview window indicates what you're looking at in envisage. I'll use the slice tools to help move through the block model in Envisage. There's this option here called Move Slicing Plane. I'll click on that. 
and then I can use my mouse to drag the screen through the model area. You can see the different geologic dom domains as they change while you're moving through the block model. Also keep in mind that on the overview window, the blue line is moving indicating where you are looking at. This is really nice because you can see how well Vulcan models your ore body and any changes that maybe you need to make. It's also very easy to edit what you're looking at in, in Vulcan as far as what's actually being displayed for the block model. You can select block, viewing, modify dynamic model, and you can change the parameters for your block model details. So maybe instead of viewing the geology variable, we can view the gold grade variable. And we'll select our gold color legend and click OK. Now, only blocks that have gold grade greater than zero, because that's what our color legend is defined by, will be displayed. Another way you can edit the way that you're viewing the block model is to actually right click on the block model that's displayed in Envisage and select Properties. This will get you back to the block model details page quickly. We'll go back to the geo variable and our geo legend and this time we can restrict the blocks that are being displayed by using some standard criteria. Let's mask by variable. We'll select variable geo equals TQ1 to display the TQ1 ore body. Now only blocks that are designated in the geologic domain TQ1 will be displayed on the screen. Another option you could do is to mask by variable. So let's say variable geo is equal to air. And then check this option, reverse selection. So instead of picking all the air blocks, we're going to pick everything except the air blocks. And click OK. So anything under the topographic surface will be displayed here. Another nice option to use for viewing when it comes to the dynamic model is you can rotate your screen a little bit and then change the section width for your drill holes. So right now I'm going to select all from layer dig dollar sign drill. So this will select my entire drill hole layer. And then over in the property editor, check on the option use section widths. So I can define a different section width for the drill holes that is separate from what was defined in the section when I created it. So let's say 1000 front and back. So even though the block model section view is only going to be 20 meters front and back, the drill holes are allowed to go up to a thousand meters front and back. This is nice because you can now go through the model and have your drill holes be visible the entire time. You can also load up triangulations. So let's go find that TQ1 triangulation and see how that models in Vulcan, but the triangulation is a little bit thick. Let's change the width for that so that we can see the slice and then a very skinny slice for the triangulation and then the drill holes will still be at that 1000 meter viewing width. So everything has its own properties for viewing. So if we click on the triangulation and go to our property editor, under the viewing panel, 
we can check on use section widths and I've defined the front width of 2 and back width of 2. So now when you go through the model, the triangulation does not get in the way. So viewing the model dynamically is helpful because you can move through the block plane quickly throughout the entire modeling area. You can also easily modify the slice by variable, color scheme, and apply certain restrictions. The downside of viewing the model dynamically is if you have a very, very large model, it might take a while to load. So those are the three different viewing tools that we're going to discuss today. The next thing that we're going to talk about is how to view grade values that are estimated in a specific block using the inquire tool, block text, and data tips. We already have the model loaded, so let's use the inquire tool to get the information for gold grade inside a certain block. To do that, we're going to use block viewing inquire. We'll select specific variables and we'll say we want the gold grade and the geology domain and click OK. Then click on the block coordinate that you want some information for. In your report window you'll see We've got our gold grade reported as 0.8 and our geology grade or our geology domain is TQ1. You can keep clicking. So I clicked on this yellow block over here and you've got a gold grade of 1.07 and a geology of TQ2. And let's click over here and you can see the gold grade is negative 99 which means it wasn't estimated and geology is waste. So that's a really easy way to get some information for gold grade right out of your block model and display it in your report window. Another way to get the same information is to view block text. If you right click on the dynamic model and select properties, here in our dynamic block model details panel we can check on the option display block text. Then click OK. And here I've got a couple of text schemes already set up. If I pick the text scheme for AU, it'll say you're going to be viewing two variables. The top one's going to be gold and the bottom one's going to be geology. You can further define how you want the text to be displayed. You can change the color and you can color by a legend if you want to but we're just going to leave it the same. And you can have up to nine variable annotations for every single block and click OK. So as you can see here, we can view the gold grade and right below it is going to be the geologic domain right in your dynamic model. However, I find this view to be a little bit cluttered looking and one of my personal preferences is to view data tips. To do that, we're going to go back into properties for the block model details and uncheck display block text and check on the option enable data tips. You can have some different identifiers. I've got one already set up for gold and that'll show us the gold grade and the geology domain and click OK. Now the text is gone, but if I hover my mouse over a block, a little comment box will pop up and it'll give you the gold and the geology domain right in your comment box. So we've got gold grade is 0.84 and the geo is TQ2. And then over here we've got a waste block and gold is negative 99. So the inquire tool, the block text, and data tips are three separate options to quickly view grade values in your block model. The last thing that we're going to discuss is how to view block search ellipses and samples used to populate the grade for every single block. 
let's go back into Vulcan. And I'm going to clean up the page a little bit and remove the drill holes. The first thing that we need to do is load up the composite samples that were used to populate grade for the block model. To do that, we'll go under Geology, Compositing, Display, select our composite database, and load them as points. Today, we're only concerned with the gold assay value. And I'm going to increase my front and back width of our section view. So you can see on the screen we've got composite points and our block model loaded. Let's find out what points were used to populate certain blocks in Vulcan. To do that, we'll go block, grade estimation, explain. We'll select our estimation file and which estimation ID we want to use. And then we'll tell Vulcan what we want to actually see. So we'll say the block estimation and the centroid and what grade we want shown for each sample that was used. I'm going to select, change the colors so that it's easier to see in the background. and click OK. So I'm going to pick the block that we want to view information for. And you can see here the search ellipse for that block is now being displayed. You can see how big it is compared to your sample density and your block model. And then you can also see which samples were used to populate that block. So you can see a couple of these samples have grade values displayed next to them. That means that that sample was used to populate that block. Also down in your report window, you can see each individual sample, their XYZ coordinate, what their original grade was, and how far away from the center of the block it exists. Then Vulcan applies a weighting, and you get a separate block estimated gold grade value. So if you are questioning the grade of a certain block, this is a good method to figure out how that value was populated based on the samples, search ellipse, and weighting applied to each available sample. If you want to remove the ellipse from your screen, you have to select Block, Grade Estimation, Remove Ellipsoid, and pick your ellipse, and then it, it disappears. All right, so those are some nice tools available in Vulkan to view block models and quickly display grade information. There are, of course, more robust tools to report data in reserves, but today's webinar was all about some easy viewing options. I hope you enjoyed it and were able to learn something new. I'll hand it back over to Didi. Thanks, Michaela. As I mentioned before, please write in any questions through the panel on the right-hand side of your screen. Let's see if we have any so far. First one here, didn't we used to be able to slice with points and the view automatically went to the section plane? And can we get that option back? I'm not sure about that one. I'll have to get back to you on that. Next question, when you are viewing the block model and you excluded the air blocks, can you also exclude waste blocks at the same time? Sure, there are lots of different ways that you can, you know, restrict the data that you're viewing with the dynamic model. Uh, let's go back into the properties area with the dynamic block model details. Under standard criteria, instead of using the mask by variable, you can use a test condition instead. So if you wanted to exclude the air and the waste, 
uh, a test condition actually such as the one that I've already got written out is geo is not equal to air and geo is not equal to waste and then click OK and OK again and now you'll see all the ore bodies displayed that are not waste and not air. All right, thanks, Michaela. Looks like we are nearing the end of our time today. If you have additional questions, feel free to contact Michaela directly or email support at maptech.com. We hold a different webinar each month, so please visit maptech.com to view the entire schedule. On behalf of the entire MapTech team, thank you for attending and have a great day.